So today is several examples of simple circuits to indicate the phase sequence of a three-phase voltage. Or phase order, or phase direction, or phase rotation. And this is especially useful when you want to connect a three-phase motor, which is supposed to turn in a certain direction. But if the three phases are connected wrong, the three-phase induction motor will turn the wrong direction. Sometimes you can use a trial and error, you just wire it randomly and if it's turning the wrong way, you just swap two phases. But sometimes this could damage a machine, so the phase direction has to be tested. And there are several simple circuits to do this. The simplest one is to use two tungsten lamps connected to two phases and the center point is connected to the third one via either a capacitor or an inductor. And then based on the direction, one lights up a brighter and one dimmer. The voltage doesn't completely cancel out on one of them, so it's still dimly lit, but the other one is much brighter. And it's using either a capacitor or an inductor for the phase shift. But of course sometimes you have to use pairs of series lamps instead of just one in each leg because of the high voltage. And the indicator is a bit cumbersome with relatively large tungsten lamps and a capacitor. Or some inductor maybe. Some demonstration for completeness. One is way brighter. Let's also try it with an inductor. It should be the other way. And it is. And when I swap two phases, it again should be the other way. And it is. But for continuous operation you'd have to use a series pair of lamps for each, because the brighter one is getting more than its nominal voltage. That's the capacitor and the inductor. And the lamps. But for it not to fail in several seconds you'd have to actually use four lamps, two and two. Even more cumbersome. So it might be more practical to use a neon lamp or neon lamps, and just small components like resistors and a small capacitor, and no inductors. Making an inductor for this purpose is almost impossible, because at low current is barely one milliamp for the neon lamps, and a relatively high voltage in a mains and a low frequency 50 or 60 Hz, the inductor would have to have millions of turns. The inductance would have to be so high it's absolutely impractical. This is one of the well-known indicators of a phase sequence with a neon lamp. It uses two RC circuits, basically two series combinations of a capacitor and a resistor. These are phase shifters. And the neon lamp lights up in one direction and not in the other. And that's because in one direction the voltage between this point and this point basically cancels out and it's almost zero. And in the other direction the voltage between these two points is significant and so the lamp lights up. And there is an even simpler version which uses one capacitor less. There is one resistive divider and one phase shifter. And because this side is made of just resistors, you don't have to have an additional resistor in series with the lamp. Like in this one where without the resistor there would be a direct path through just capacitors from one phase via the lamp to the other, which would make the neon lamp run in sudden pulses. I will try to explain how these circuits work. I was thinking about the most intuitive way of explaining it without any complex calculations, and I came up with this. It's basically a phaser diagram and a schematic in one, and the distance between the terminals of the components is proportional to the voltage on the components, and the components are also drawn at an angle proportional to the angle of the voltage on them. This is probably not how it's explained in schools, but what I like about it is that you just look at it and get it. And of course the voltage on the capacitor is 90 degrees shifted against the voltage on a resistor, so there's basically a right angle here and a right angle here. And if the values of the components are right, these two points basically meet. The voltage here cancels out and there is no voltage between them. And if you connect a lamp between them, it does not light up. If they are rotating the other way, it will be basically flipped around the axis. Here it will be this way. And here it will be again flipped around this axis. And then you have quite a significant voltage between these two points. The voltage again is represented by the distance between them. So this is basically a graphical intuitive explanation of this circuit. Let's try to explain this one in a similar way. That's again the graphical representation of it and two series resistors are on a straight line. The voltages on them are the same phase angle. And the resistor capacitor circuit has a right angle here. And again in one out of the two possible phase sequences there's virtually no voltage between these two points. The lamp is not lighting up. And either way, there is a significant voltage from this point to the point in the resistive divider and the lamp is lighting up. There is always 90 degree of angle between the capacitor and the resistor. The voltage on the capacitor is always 90 degrees behind the resistor. When you change the rotation, basically this resistor capacitor circuit flips around the axis. I hope my explanation makes sense. 
And of course the components have to be calculated for the ratios of the voltages to be right. This is basically a triangle with equal sides. And the height of it is the square root of 3 divided by 2 times the side of it, which is any of the sides. It's obviously an equal sided triangle, so all sides are A. And so the voltage on this capacitor, let's call it the voltage of the capacitor, is the square root of 3 times the voltage on this resistor, which is half of A. So this is the voltage of a resistor. In Europe there is 400 volts between phases, so the resistor has 200 volts on it. This one, this one, and also this one. So the capacitor has about 346 volts on it. Of course all the voltages are AC. Of course the voltage between the points here and here is the voltage without any load. If you load it with a lamp, the voltage can be lower. The same applies to this one. By loading it, the voltage between these two points gets lower. But in most cases you're probably going to use this one because it's simpler and does the same job. So let's try to build it for demonstration. Of course we have to choose some component values. I have a lot of these 4.7 nano 1 kilovolt capacitors, so let's just calculate the resistors around it. Of course the resistor in a series with the capacitor has to be a specific value. The ones in the divider are not critical. But for simplicity you can use the same values for all three. We've made a table of resistances which you have to use with specific values of capacitors. Some common values from 1 nano to 10 nano. Under 1 nano the neon lamp would be basically too dim and, and the current through more than 10 nano would be more than needed for neon lamps. And coincidentally the resistances calculated for most of the common capacitances are actually close to common values. For example for 4.7 nano it calculates 391 kilo ohms, which is super close to a common value 390. And of course this is frequency specific so there is another table for 60 Hz instead of 50 Hz. I might actually copy it into the description. And then I came up with one more version which is using LEDs and one capacitor and two sets of resistors which is basically the same principle as the one with tungsten lamps. And based on the rotation, one LED lights up or the other. There's a 33 nano capacitor at least 1 kV or 400 V AC. Two dropping resistors, 100 kilo ohms, 2 watts each. And small resistors in parallel to each LED. And each side works as a resistive divider, which is needed because this circuit does not completely cancel out the voltage. It's just significantly lower on one side and higher on the other side. We measured about 94 volts on this side between here and here, so this resistive divider has to bring it below the threshold for this LED, but it still has to light it up at 360 volts. And of course the voltages are the other way, when the rotation is the other way. And now testing time! For some reason this apartment has three sockets in the bathroom, each of them on a different phase. And of course yes, it's an absolutely brilliant idea to put three phases, three times 400 volts, in a breadboard. But anyway, let's try to use this to test it. And one LED lights up, the one on the right side. And when I swap two phases, the one on the left side lights up. If this phase is missing, it lights up both. But if this one is missing, it actually lights up the other one. And this one missing, no change. The disadvantage of this circuit is that it does not give you a clear indication of a missing phase. This one doesn't show up. This one actually gives you a false reading. It indicates the other direction. So let's go back to this circuit and also test it. I'm using a 4.7 nano capacitor here. So according to my table this resistor has to be 390 kilo ohms. And this divider isn't critical, they just have to be equal, but I'm also using 390 kilo ohms here. And again, a three phase main is breadboard time. When I plug it in one way, the lamp lights up. It actually stays lit when any of the three phases is missing. And when I swap two phases, it does not light up. The phase rotation is the other way and if any of the three phases is missing, it lights up. Which kind of indicates a missing phase. So basically only if you have all three phases, the voltage cancellation happens and it turns off. And you're probably screaming you want two lamps, one for each direction. Then you have to build this circuit twice, one is mirrored and then you put them on top of each other. And they basically share this phase and these two are the other way. One of the two lamps lights up and if any of the phases is missing, it always lights up both. This gives you a nice clear indication of a missing phase. And if I swap two phases, the other lamp lights up. 
and again any of the three faces missing lights up both indicating there's something wrong and it turns out that even replacing any of the faces with neutral still gives you two lights again indicating there's something wrong with the connection and even replacing one of the faces with one of the other ones still gives you two lights So if just one lamp lights up, it indicates the direction, but also it's a decisive indication that you have all three proper phases. Let's design a circuit board for it and put it in some box. Producing the board, this was actually one of the important tools and drilling some holes. That's the board produced using just these tools, nothing with the motor. And the board layout would be absolutely impossible to design without an artificial intelligence, of course. So let's clean it a little bit. Of course, components have to be put on the board. This is the board with the component on it and it fits nicely into the box. I just have to add the lamps and the probes and that's it. The lamps are in place. Because I never trash anything, let's use some random plastic bits here. Some plastic tubes. To insulate the tape of the probe, a piece of a threaded rod. And now just two probes with a cable to finish it. And now it has probes from some old multimeter. And I can just give it the cover. And on the inactive lamp there is about just 6 volts AC, way below the threshold for it. Which for neon lamps is about 40 to 90 volts. Ideally the voltage on the inactive one would be zero, but in reality the components have some tolerances. It basically behaves the same as the prototype in the breadboard. When one of the phases is missing, it lights both lamps in the other direction. One phase missing, all three phases. And the tester can always double as a single phase voltage indicator. Any pair of probes will actually indicate a voltage above about 140 volts. Or this way, or this way. And testing this socket. Which seems to be wired right. So this one is probably wired wrong. This thing should be actually turning against this support, shouldn't it? But it's turning up the other way. So the tester's finished, it works nicely and here's the schematic of it. There's a link in the description to my website with the schematic, the table, some pictures and the description of the tester. But for completeness let's also mention a different type of phase sequence testers. The ones that probe into two phases only and neutral. Because the three phase testers typically require three hands to hold the probes plus the fourth hand to grab the tester because otherwise it's dangling on the wires and facing away from you. And this one is a bit better because one of the three probes is part of the tester so you only need three hands. But for people unlucky enough to have just two hands, there is a two-phase version of these testers. And here's the very simple schematic. It's basically probing two phases and it can tell you if this one goes before this one or this one before this one. Which is enough to tell the direction of three phases. It's basically a circuit with two legs, one has just a resistor in it and one resistor and a capacitor as a phase shifter. If this one goes before this one, the center point has a significant voltage against neutral. If this one goes before this one, the voltage basically cancels out and this spot has virtually no voltage against neutral. You can just add a neon lamp here and connect it to neutral. But for it to use just two probes, you can also add a touchpad here and basically use the same principle as a neon screwdriver, where the human body is the neutral connection basically. If the impedance of the circuit is high enough, it should be relatively safe. Of course you can add more resistors here in series for more redundancy and safety. And here's the touchpad. Here's the capacitor which can be one or several nano. Here's the resistor based on the table again. For 4.7 nano it's 390 kilo ohms. And this resistor is twice the value. So if you want to build it out of the same resistors you can just put two resistors in a series here. 
which also makes sense because the voltage from here to here is double of the voltage on this resistor. It reduces the stress on the resistors and improves safety. Plus two resistors here and they basically could be all the same values. And that's what we have built in this breadboard. There is the third phase, which is not probed, but the neon lamp does not light up if the rotation is this way. And it does light up if the rotation is this way. I should probably mark it based on the direction that makes it light up. This would be two and this would be three actually. Let's draw a spider web here and here would be the three phases. And here's the neutral. And the graphical explanation of what's happening is this. This is the counterclockwise direction where the voltage is cancelling out here and is basically at the same level as neutral. You have 230 volts from here to here, half the voltage here, 115 volts. And on this capacitor you have about 200 volts, or half of the voltage between two phases, or basically this times the square root of two. And in this situation the lamp is not lighting up, the voltage here cancels to the neutral. Now let's draw in green what's happening if it's rotating the other way. Now this circuit is basically flipped the other way around this axis between the two phases, and this spot gets here. Which basically means if it's not loaded it has 230 volts against the neutral, the same voltage as phase to neutral voltage. I hope this explanation makes it more comprehensible. And of course testing time. Now it's in the direction when it's not lighting up. And the interesting thing is that when you unplug one phase or the other it lights up. Only if both of them are connected it actually cancels out and the lamp does not light up. Now let's plug it in the other way and the lamp is lit. And it stays lit the same if you have just one of the phases. And in the direction of it lighting up, the center point has against the neutral, basically the full phase to neutral voltage. And in the direction it's not lighting up. Not lighting up and the center point against the neutral just 7 volts, definitely not enough to light up the lamp. You don't necessarily have to probe three phases. You can see on a two channel oscilloscope how this phase, the yellow channel, is 120 degree before this phase, the blue channel. And this is a very handy two channel non-grounded battery powered oscilloscope. There's a link in the description where to get it and I'm using it in a combination with Taimas 100 probes. But of course the lamp is sort of dim. You can't pass much current through a human not to give him a shock. And also if he's not in direct contact with the ground, you work with just a capacitively coupled current which is always quite low. And also because the earth or ground or neutral connection of this circuit is such high impedance, you can't really make a version with two lamps. The two circuits would influence each other. Of course there is no black magic calculating the resistor based on the capacitor. In my calculator you can calculate the capacitive reactance based on the capacitance and the frequency. And you get this resistance in kilo ohms. And you divide it by the square root of 3 because the voltage on the resistor is square root of 3 times less than the voltage on the capacitor. So its impedance has to be also square root of 3 times less. And you get about 390 kilo ohms. So that's my exhausting video about phase sequence testers. And if you've made it that far, really consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. Because it's you who can keep this weird channel running. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. And of course this was supposed to be a hand.